you know, given the weather we're having, shouldn't disease pressure in corn in particular, and perhaps soybean too, be higher than we're observing? Yep. Okay? Hi, my name is Jake Vossenkemper, Director of Agronomy and Research here at Liquor Grow. Hi, I'm Katie Hess, Director of Sales and Marketing here at Liquor Grow. Dr. Jake, you and I have both been walking a lot of fields in the last couple of weeks, and we've been talking about with all this extra rain, um, how much disease we should be seeing. And, you know, the disease pressure is fairly low, and I think a lot of people are surprised by that. So kind of wanted to jump into that today and get your opinion on that. Yeah, so what folks have been talking about is, you know, given the weather we're having, shouldn't disease pressure in corn in particular, and perhaps soybean too, be higher than we're observing. Yep. Okay? And I, I generally concur. I, I would think since all the, we have basically the perfect conditions for severe disease, it should be worse, right? So I called Allison Robertson, who's the, she's the plant pathologist at Iowa State, basically picked her brain this morning, kind of told her what I was seeing. She said that she's seeing the exact same thing. And just like me, she expected disease pressure to be worse. And, but Allison also said that, you know, there's a couple things going on here. Number one, we've had a string of very dry years, which means that, that the inoculum load isn't as high right now because we've had so many dry years in a row because there wasn't as much polar disease. So what you're saying is that inoculum, inoculum load is all that disease that used to sit in that residual down on the ground, it's just dead, it's gone, it's not as high as heavy pressure as it has been in the past yes because the, of the dry weather correct the the inoculum or the the where the disease comes from in the residue the the load of it or the amount of it is lower because we've had three years in a row where we've had very dry conditions and not a lot of foliar disease in corn okay so now if that's the case and it is uh, lower pressure on the ground does that mean we're waiting for it to blow in no, that means that it's just going to take longer for the disease to get started. Once the disease gets started, it will take off, but it's just going to take a little bit longer to get that disease pressure built up. So you think fast forward to middle of August state fair time period, you think we're going to probably start seeing these pressures back out on these leaves? Yes. And why is that, Jake? Yeah, well, that's because, you know, the, the severe foliar diseases in corn, gray leaf spot, northern corn leaf blight, tar spot, they all have what they call a polycyclic disease cycle. And what happens is, in the beginning, disease pressure builds, 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 but then it just takes off rapidly, okay? Because the inoculum load gets built up in the canopy, there's plenty of spores flying around, and before you know it, it's just everywhere, okay? So it's taking a little bit longer to get that inoculum load built up is what's happening, okay? The other thing that Allison reminded me on the phone today was, is that, you know, it, it, it takes, it, the leaf age has a lot to do with susceptibility to, to diseases. So that's, there's a couple reasons why the lower canopy tends to get diseases first. Number one, it's closer to the inoculum and the residue. Number two, as leaves age, they become more susceptible to polar diseases. And we got to remember it's still July, okay? And we typically, even normally, we don't see diseases really take off until August. So. Um, all that says is that we have the perfect weather. It's taking a little bit longer than normal for the disease inoculum to build up. But I mean, we still have, unfortunately, terrible conditions for disease and it's gonna take off rapidly. And Allison does think so too, particularly gray leaf spot. Um, that's kind of the weather we're having right now. Warm, very wet. That one ought to, ought to take off before it's over again. So here's my uh, question off the cuff for you. I've been looking at some different hybrids with different ratings. Um, and one we haven't talked about for quite a while is anthracnose stock rot. Um, one, does, does foliar fungicide help to protect against anthracnose stock rot? Foliar fungicide won't control anth anthracnose stock rot. But what foliar fungicide can do is it can keep the crop healthier. Okay, when we start to mature, we start to rapidly put sugars toward the developing year okay and what that does is it takes away sugar from the lower stalks in the leaf okay but if we have plentiful sugar then we have enough to fill the year and we have enough to keep the lower stalk and the lower leaves alive and keeping the lower stalk and the lower leaves alive holds back stalk rots in general so stalk rots infect the roots first and then they come up the stalk so if we can keep the lower stalk healthy and the lower leaves healthy, 
we can keep stock rots at bay. And that's why foliar fungicides can generally help standability and can, as a general theme, keep stock rots at a lower level. Good job, Jake, right off the cuff. <laughs> no problem, Katie. It's Any, my job. <laughs> anything else you'd like to share with the folks today? Um, just like corn and soybean, you know, we're not seeing a bunch of diseases. We are seeing a uh, septoria brown spot in the lower canopy. It's working its way up like we would expect. We are seeing a little bit of downy mildew, I believe. We see some right here in the upper canopy. I haven't seen any um, frog alley spot yet, but we had that hurricane roughly three weeks ago now. So frog alley spot is something I would definitely be watching for because frog has to come up from the south, remember. So be watching for frog alley spot. I've seen plenty of stink bugs. I have not seen as many bean leaf beetles as I thought we might see this year. Oh, seen this year. Yeah. But I have seen a lot of stink bugs and corn and now I'm seeing soybeans. I know this is going longer than uh, we originally planned and that's the Midwestern way, right? It's always hard to say goodbye. But um, rootworm beetles, haven't seen a ton of those flying either. Haven't seen a ton. I've seen some, but haven't seen a ton. And we also don't have a bunch of lodge corn suggesting that maybe roots are in better shape than we thought. Yes. given the big ratio type of event we had come through about a week ago. Right. Well, if you have any other questions for us, you know, shoot us an email at questions at liquid-grow.com. Dr. Jake will let you go back to scouting some corn and beans. Thanks, Katie. Stay in the know with Liquid Grow.